Hey, what's up guys, Ref here. So we've reached it, the fourth Sweet Baby Ink related video of this week. And just like the others covered on this channel, it is jam packed with some new and shocking updates regarding this situation. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as the official Sweet Baby Ink account remains private on Twitter, a lot of attention has shifted from this company as a whole to some individual players, including the CEO of the company, Kim Belair, who's been under a lot of fire thanks to this clip being shared on Twitter. Now, before we look into this clip, there are many clips of this CEO that have been going around showing that she has an absolute weird fixation on gamers, in particular white male gamers, as well as some issues with self-inserts on every project she works on. But in this clip, we're going to get a very clear idea of the kind of tactics the threatening tactics that this CEO and others have used to force companies to inject woke narratives into their storylines and their video games. So here's the caption saying, the co-founder of Sweet Baby and Kim Belair proudly explains the method she uses to force bosses at game studios to censor, alter, and diversify game projects she feels are problematic, in quotes, terrify them, aka threaten them with the anger of the cancel culture mob. Let's listen to this clip. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. So based on her many tirades over the years, as well as this clip, it's very clear the kind of tactics that woke people like Kim Belair will take. They love to weaponize concepts like empathy, diversity, and inclusion to threaten and intimidate people they want to push their agenda onto. They need these companies because without them, they don't have the mouthpiece to share the woke agenda they want to push onto other people. And just like with Gamergate, these people are pushing a grift where they convince and intimidate these companies into thinking they have to hire companies like Sweet Baby Inc. to make changes to their product. And in the process, threatening the careers and reputations of these games and its developers who are just trying to make a product while avoiding this cancel culture threat being propagated by people like Kim. And this is a common Gamergate tactic as well because they love to push this narrative that the media, for example, gaming journalists, will make articles about you, canceling you for not being inclusive enough and things like that. And we saw that over and over again. And unsurprisingly, ever since the harsh backlash Sweet Baby Inc. has been facing started about a week ago, gaming journalists have been completely silent on this whole thing. But that's a story for later in this video. But this turns out to not be anything new, threatening people and companies to do your woke agenda. We saw this almost happen with Cyberpunk 2077. So we see Grums here with a tweet. This is someone who's been involved in the industry for a long time, including all the way back to the Gamergate days, quoting an old Anita Sarkeesian tweet from 2019, saying Sweet Baby Inc. wasn't the only one threatening developers to force politics into games. What do you call it when you mention something unfortunate might happen to you if you don't pay someone? Better archive this before it disappears. So a quick reminder for people who are Anita Sarkeesian is. She is the creator of Feminist Frequency, the main party behind the Gamergate grift from 2014 that got so bad in their attempt to inject woke narratives into video games and the industry that it actually reached the United Nations. Since then, Feminist Frequency has shut down and a lot of the players involved have dispersed into many companies, including Sweet Baby Inc. But Anita herself has had a hard time over the years getting some positions in the video game industry. And commonly, she has lashed out at companies on Twitter who seem like they don't want anything to do with her, including CD Projekt Red, who she added in this tweet saying, I'm always available for consulting because it sure sounds like you might need it before the whole of the internet drags you for what sounds like some potentially sexist representations, which we all know you've struggled with in the past. Now, she has been obliterated for this tweet because what does this tweet sound like? It's basically saying, pay me money 
or something bad's gonna happen to you. So what she's doing here, what Anita is doing, is very similar to what we've seen employees of Sweet Baby Inc. do over the years. They try to use the fear of cancel culture to intimidate these gaming companies to hire their services, their consultation, so that in the process they can inject these stories with all kinds of woke narratives that they want to share. And it's hardly anything new. Like I said, this has been going on for around a decade at this point. We have proof that this has been happening for around a decade now. But despite everything going on with Sweet Baby Inc. and other companies that have been facing criticism for their actions, there are people still defending them, going to bat for these companies and fighting tooth and nail to defend their honor, including this individual named Wally, who released this clip going after people criticizing Sweet Baby Inc., including individuals like Asmund Gold. And let's just give this a quick listen. Wokeness is killing gaming. Here we go. I have avoided the conversation around Sweet Baby Inc. for so long, but now it's getting out of hand. Basically, when a game is being made, some people will hire them to help them out with writing a dialogue or character design of certain types of characters. Spoiler alert, it usually involves stories and characters that isn't the default. Now, anti-woke people caught wind of this and they flock to it like flies on a turd. They'll tell you that they're the reason why Kill the Justice League and Arkham Knight are bad games. They'll say they're the reason why Spider-Man is dating a deaf woman, why Joel lost in golf, and why they can't edge to their favorite characters. And it all sounds ridiculous because from the bottom of my heart, it is. Now, before we get into some of the responses to this clip, let's answer the question that is attached to it. It says, if Samus from the Metroid franchise was revealed as a woman today, they would call it forced diversity, referring to people criticizing Sweet Baby Inc. Now, let me make this very clear. If people enjoyed the character Samus in this current landscape, Twitter users would call them porn addicts and incels for liking an attractive female character. But let's address this whole concept of forced diversity. Okay, this claim and its relevancy to this whole situation is kind of a moot point because we know this is happening. This is not some 4chan conspiracy that companies are going out there enforcing diversity into video games. It is a proven fact. We know companies like Sweet Baby Inc. exist solely to force diversity into video games. That's quite literally their purpose in this industry. That's why they're being hired. So that's not some crazy thing that people are making up. It's more just rather another round of goalpost shifting where people are talking about forced diversity when a lot of times it's about the wrong type of diversity in the eyes of people like this who are upset that Sweet Baby Inc. is being called out. This tweet really hits the nail on the head here. It says, meanwhile in the real world, there's only one group of people that loves to complain about Samus and it's certainly not gamers. And one of the attached images is this rant that Anita Sarkeesian made, remember her from earlier in the video? She made this back in the Gamergate days where she was upset about the classic Metroid game where she titled this rant, Women as a Reward. Because in that game, if you completed it, she'd take off her helmet and it was discovered back then that she was actually female to the surprise of many who, by the way, in the millions, fell in love with this character and have continued to love this character for decades since then, there was also another component of that classic game where the faster you completed the game, the more clothing would be revealed at the end to the point where if you did it fast enough, she would only be in a bikini, which of course made Anita very upset. So we're seeing people talking about forced diversity while we've seen diversity in games, a female lead in a game like Metroid. However, to Anita and other people who are injecting these woke narratives, it's not the right kind of diversity, and they're upset about that. So it's, again, another round of goalpost shifting. Now, we've seen other articles from back in 2014. This was the other one that that user shared, saying, Not your bae. Why putting high heels on Samus is still a terrible idea. Yep, they're saying it's overly sexualizing the character based on the type of shoes she was wearing. Written by Kevin Wong back in 2014. More like Kevin Wrong, am I right? Sorry, couldn't help myself. But uh, here's another very easy counter to this clip. This user said, very true, that's why everyone is calling Stellar Blade woke trash. Same with Bayonetta, Autotoma, Resident Evil, 
and so on. This is obviously being sarcastic. People are going crazy over these games because they have very strong, well-written, attractive female leads. Everyone is losing their minds over Stellar Blade. Gamers are very excited about this, and the only people complaining about this are people supporting woke companies like Sweet Baby Inc., who are, they are these people are ironically attacking this character, calling her unrealistic and an appeal to the male gaze and all these other dis stupid things. And of course, we know it's a very realistic design because it was based on a 3D scan of a real life Korean model. But that just goes to show you these people have no pulse on what's going on. People don't like forced diversity when it's very, very obvious. It's very obvious in cases like Overwatch. Okay, people love the Overwatch characters. They thought everything was fine. No complaints. But the second Blizzard would get into a scandal, all of a sudden a bunch of these Overwatch girls became LGBT characters. And it's just forced diversity. It's very obvious. And people see through that stuff. But in the replies to that main tweet, that Wally individual would get into a very embarrassing exchange where this user would say, they can pay consultants or do research themselves. Ghost of Tsushima devs actually went there to engage with the environment they could have paid a company or people from japan but they didn't if you want to know uh, how people do anything you don't need a consultant where wally would reply saying do you move the goalpost or just admit you were wrong where of course he would then goalpost shift saying they learned about the invasion of tsushima and even brought in consultants who helped the developers understand the art of samurai sword fighting styles and do some motion capture, which is obviously a goalpost shift, where this user would make a very simple quote retweet saying, Ghosts of Tsushima consultants, good. Sweet Baby Inc., bad. Understand the difference now, where Wally says, no, actually. Where another user would say, you seriously don't understand the difference between consultants making the fantasy of being a samurai more immersive versus adding tokenistic black characters, where Wally replies, you don't see the similarities between one culture more accurate and making another more accurate. Just because you act like they do different things doesn't mean they did, where another user replied saying, one set of consultants was doing their job in good faith. And as you can see, this is an article other people shared where the the devs of Tsushima were literally acknowledged by the island itself and made ambassadors to the island. Trust me, there are no Sweet Baby Inc. employees who are going to get an honor like that with the forced diversity that they are trying to put into video games they're responsible for getting or providing consultation for. But moving forward, a positive new, news for uh, Ghost of Tsushima fans, there's actually the director cut now coming to PC on May 16th. So there's some good news for fans of that franchise. PC bros once again eating good. But speaking of one beloved franchise, moving to another one recently damaged, we're going to talk again about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League because this is a rabbit hole that has been very heavily focused on in all of my videos about Sweet Baby Inc. Because Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League was produced by Rocksteady Games, who employed the consultation of Sweet Baby Inc. And there has been a shocking development in the situation where Warner Bros. has made a very tone-deaf announcement saying, WB sees its future game strategy to involve more live service mobile and free-to-play games rather than just launching a one-and-done console game how do we develop a game around for example a hogwarts legacy or harry potter that is a live service where people can live and work and build and play in that world in an ongoing basis oh boy this is the worst tweet and worst decision ever made so here we have hogwarts legacy developed by wb the highest selling game of 2023, a one and done type game, made them over a billion dollars in sales, a massive success by all measure, versus Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, a live service flop that Warner Bros. essentially said a lesser company would have gone under due to the amount of money they lost on this game. In fact, despite the game only being out for about a month, 
The average player count, the live player count right now, is typically in the 200s. That is terrible. So seeing all of that, what route do you think Warner Bros. would go? Yup, they went with the live service slop. They said, they looked at these two, Hogwarts Legacy, an immense success, one and done type game, versus Suicide Squad, a live service game that flopped horribly and is hated by gamers, and they chose the terrible option. It is baffling, ladies and gentlemen. I genuinely cannot believe how allergic to success these companies are. I mean, is this like the first corporation who genuinely just hates making money? Anyone, you don't even have to be familiar with video games at all, could look at this situation and understand what is the better route in the situation. And these professionals made the worst decision, the very obvious bad decision and direction to move going forward. They have learned nothing from the last year and how gamers have responded to these two types of games. But anyways, here's a little setup to some future videos I plan on covering this week. So here's one user saying, there's a whole customer revolt going on. Sweet Baby employees tried to mass report a guy's stream and the gaming media are completely silent. They'd rather lose clicks on an exploding topic than bring attention to something they deem damaging to their side. Here's another one saying, just checking to see which legacy outlets have created a story about the pushback on Sweet Baby Inc. and the 158,000 gamers who've had enough. Kotaku, nothing. Polygon, nothing. IGN, nothing. GameSpot, nothing. Rock, rock Paper Shotgun, nothing. Nothing from any of them. Amazing. Yeah, it's not surprising at all. These companies have been in the hands of these woke companies for a long time. Like I said earlier in the video, that was a common tactic in Gamergate. All these gaming journalists sided with this woke nonsense and they have stuck with it to their own demise all these years later. All they have at this point and all they care about is their agenda. They don't care about fixing their reputation. They don't care about gamers. They don't care about providing interesting stories or news. They just care about their agenda. It is literally all they have at this point. And it's so pathetic to watch them remain silent. They could literally profit off of this, but instead they hide and say nothing on the most relevant and explosive topic currently happening in gaming. And they just stay silent because all they have is their agenda. And that's really gonna do it for this video. Another round of Sweet Baby Inc. related drama. And in the future, like I just implied, we're gonna be looking at some other companies that are involved in this situation as well. Not just the media, but other woke companies that have really dug their claws into the industry because Sweet Baby Inc. is not the only one. And people are starting to discover other companies that are doing very similar consulting services to the detriment of gamers and the games that they're playing. But, that, but that's, sorry, my brain is literally melting from all this. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, share your thoughts about today's topics in the comments section down below, and I'll see you guys next time.